year, my desk was, well, it was next to a wall that was shared on the other side by a preschool, which rented the facilities at the church I was working at. The wall was thin, so I could often hear everything. <laughs> I remember one morning, while well, sitting at my desk trying to work, I overheard one of the preschool teachers gathering up her small group to have story time. And in the most calm, mild-mannered voice, I heard her ask, Who was it who brought this pile of sand into our circle? Well, it turns out, it was Lily. Lily had taken off her shoes and dumped the contents of the playground in the sandbox right there on the carpet. <laughs> Without missing a beat, and with no condemnation in her voice, the teacher then asked Lily, so what do you think will happen with this pile of sand on the carpet? Well, the results didn't seem so great. <laughs> so she went on, Lily, do you think that was a good choice you made? Hmm, what can you do next time you have sand in your shoes? I think this is why I am not a preschool teacher. <laughs> Lily did go on to empty the sand into the garbage can, but I was amazed at that teacher's immense and how she managed to take a pile of sand on the carpet and turn it into a positive teaching moment. I cannot guarantee that I would not have lost my temper or there would have at least been an audible, exasperated sigh. Well, I think there are times for all of us that we cannot help but to look at ourselves and then look at others and compare. There will always be someone with more patience than we have or who is more kind than we are or who is a better teacher than we are or who is just more successful than we are. And when we start looking at the qualities others have that we don't feel we possess, it's easy to start thinking that we are a failure. And when we do that, when we underestimate the qualities that we do possess, well, then we are really belittling the gifts that God has chosen to give us. And we end up swimming in sin, as Luther described as being bent over, staring at our navel, focusing only on ourselves and what we have or do not have. And then so often, the other part of human nature kicks in, where we decide to knock that person right off the pedestal we just put them on. Now that person who we admire becomes a pushover. She's really a know-it-all. Oh, so naive. And when we start to tear another child of God down, well, we are truly immersed in sin. It's as if we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. Well, Martin Luther is one who often found himself trapped in that cycle of feeling like a failure. 500 years ago, he was a law student and found himself riding in a storm one night where lightning nearly struck him. And it was then that he prayed to St. Anne and vowed to become a monk. Well, when his father caught wind of this, he was angry and 
and frustrated that his son would choose to leave law and enter the priesthood. He thought his son to be nothing more than a disappointment. And I fear that feeling stuck with Luther much of his life. Later on, as an Augustinian monk, Luther often practiced self-denial and self-flagellation as a way to pay penance for his sins. He did this to such an extreme that his confessor finally had had enough and sent him off to study at the university. It was there that he finally began to open the scriptures and to absorb them. And where the gospel that we read today and Paul's letter to the Romans finally began to sink in. Well, it's been 500 years, but I can still identify with Luther. Can you? I don't know that a day goes by where I don't ask myself if I am good enough. And the truth is, I'm not. None of us are on our own. We can never possess enough patience or wisdom. It is impossible to love perfectly. And we can never volunteer enough hours or serve on enough committees or give enough money, even if we were to give it all, <coughs> we would still fall short because we are entrapped and that whenever we start focusing on ourselves and our stuff instead of God and God's will, we are stuck in sin. Well, the part of scripture that changed Luther wasn't the part about falling short and being a slave to sin. I think that part he had already lived out enough. But it was what came next. When Jesus told those who had believed in him that the truth would make them free. And what Paul wrote about how we are justified by grace as a gift that it is Christ who redeems us and makes us enough. It is because of Jesus, because Jesus showed us God's unconditional love for us by going to the cross for us, that we get to end this vicious cycle and know that we are enough. We no longer <coughs> need to live like a slave worried that we need to watch our every step lest we falter, because then we might be condemned. No. Christ has set us free to respond to God's love and grace with enthusiasm. To sin boldly, as Luther wrote, no longer having to live timidly, but to live ferociously in finding ways to share the good news of the gospel. Imagine for a minute what you would do with total freedom. Now don't stop at world travel, mansions, or luxury cars. That doesn't even begin to cut it. I mean real freedom. If you could change the world, what would you do? If you could harness all of the talents that God has seen fit to gift you with, and those that we don't even know about yet, 
because we have never experienced Daddy, them. No. If we could combine that with all the passion for a child coming up to the altar, if we could use all of those gifts and talents with our passion and zeal for serving God and spreading God, Christ's love in this world, what would it look like? Would you end world hunger? Would you bring peace to the Middle East? Would you make sure that every bare foot had a shoe? Would you show immense patience to a preschooler, one child at a time? Well, this amazing grace has made us enough and free to do just that. Martin Luther was just a man who experienced grace and responded by changing the world. We are fools if we think that we can do any less. This Reformation Sunday, let us rejoice that we have been made free and we are enough. <coughs> Amen. <coughs>